Hello everybody, welcome to another Python tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is how to make a stock screener based on the indicators that we've built. So in the past I did a stock screener tutorial uh, for fundamentals on companies like price to book ratio and all that. And in this video uh, what we're going to be thinking about is more of like using it with our indicators that we've built. So uh, in this video for example we're going to use the RSI and then we're going to screen stocks based on the RSI and only have it spit out stocks that have an RSI value that's suggesting the stock is currently oversold, which suggests that we possibly buy into it. Now, obviously, you could use this with any of the indicators. Uh, so even like, you know, say Bollinger Bands, if it's breaking out. So if, if the current price is above the top band, that would suggest to you maybe a, a buy. Uh, so that would be a buy signal and you could either have it, you know, show you the chart. So in this case, what we're going to have it do is if the stock meets our requirements, it's just going to pop up the chart for us. Uh, but you could use it obviously to dictate trades for algo trading and all this kind of stuff. So anyways, uh, that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So if you don't uh, already have the code, what we'll do is go to, there will be a link in the description. Uh, it should take you to page kind of like this one. I think I actually link you to the actual uh, code page. But either way, uh, you'll want to click on sample code with empty slot for the bottom indicator. Go ahead and just click on that one. We'll just use that for now. Uh, but if you did go through our uh, charting stocks in Python tutorial series, you can use that code as well if you want to get that bottom thing filled up. Anyway, highlight, copy that code, and paste it into an empty script. So in this code already, we actually have uh, the RSI uh, calculation here, like the function to calculate RSI is already done for us. So we don't really have to worry about doing that. So now what we want to do is uh, just kind of make it the few changes that we need to make uh, of this script. So instead of just plotting anything, it only plots stocks with an RSI value uh, in the area that we want it. Now the first thing that we need is uh, like if you want to screen stocks, you need to go through a list of stocks, right? So the first thing you need is actually like a list of stocks. Now you can put any list of stocks that you want in there. Someone had asked about uh, penny stocks, for example, so they wanted to just screen through penny stocks. Well, in that case, you would really need to make a program or find a list of a bunch of penny stocks, um, or you can make a program that just says, hey, if the stock price isn't is less than X then consider it or something like that but really you'd want to just gather a list beforehand otherwise you're gonna waste a lot of time going through stocks that are you know if you're looking through like a list of the Russell 3000 or something uh, it's gonna take a long time to go through all of those and just find the stocks that are penny stocks so first you would just run a screener that only spit out the stocks that are under a specific price uh, but anyway, in this in this video, what we're going to consider is the list of the S&P 500, and then we've got an S&P 500 short list. So this is just a list of stocks, um, and it's a short version of the S&P 500. But actually, what we'll do is we'll probably run it through the S&P 500, and then we'll make just like a list of known uh, stocks that uh, are below a certain value. But anyway, so we'll need that list. Um, if I recall, or if I remember to, I'll put this in the description of this video. And if I forget, someone just holler at me and I'll, I'll copy and paste it in there. That way you guys don't have to figure out how to get that list. But anyway, uh, so that's what we need first. We've got that list. Then what we're going to want to do is come down to the bottom. And if you recall, the name of the list is, we'll use S&P 500 first. So we'll come down here. And instead of this, right, what we really want to do is delete this bottom part of the script. And in fact, let me uh, make the size a little bigger for us. Cool. So back to the bottom. So in this while true loop, just delete everything except for the graph data part. We'll leave that. And then what we're going to do is instead turn it into for loop. So we're going to say for each stock, or actually what we should say, we'll just say for stock in SP 500 graph data stock, right? And actually, the other thing we'll do is we'll, we'll print stock just so it prints out to us uh, what stock that is. In fact, actually, I think uh, it prints it out at the top. So maybe we don't even have to do that. Currently pulling stock. Yeah, so it already prints it out. So actually, we don't need to print stock. So for stock in SP500, graph data, you know, whatever stock that is. 
So that's step one. Now, so it'll run through every single list or every single stock in our list, right? And then so if you had a smaller list, you could say for each stock in, say you wanted to do penny stocks, you would have a list of penny stock and for each stock in penny stocks or something like that. So now that we've done that, we want to come down to the graph data because that's what's actually being run here. And first we need to pull the stock and all that, and that's fine. But then when we come down here, before we actually start graphing stuff and drawing figures, so underneath uh, where it's got, you know, so the, here's the beginning, we scroll down to the first definition of date, close, high, low, open, hit enter a few times, make some space, because that's where we're going to do some of our new coding. Now the first thing that we want to do is define RSI. Now we've already done that uh, for axis zero, uh, right here, RSI equals RSI func close P. Well, we don't really need to call that again because we're going to call it right at the top. So go ahead and scroll down and, and get rid of that. So it'll be, you know, here's axis one. Keep scrolling until you see the definition of axis two. And right underneath that is where we've defined RSI. So just comment that out. And while you're here, you might as well copy it as well. So copy that and come back up here and paste that, you know, within this try, right? So now we've, we've defined RSI instead up here. Uh, so if you were using a different function, for example, or a different uh, indicator, you would, you know, call that indicator once you have the data, right? So if you recall, all of our indicator videos started with date, close P, high P, low P, open P, and so on. And you had to populate that first. So uh, <clears throat> if you want to use a different indicator, it's the same thing, you know, just call that function right here. And the next thing you would do is we want to know what the latest value of RSI is. So with RSI, what we're looking for, if you don't recall RSI, RSI is going to me it measures between a 0 and a 100. Anything above a 70, usually, is considered overbought. And it, it's um, likely to fall down because there's too many. It's been overbought, so it's going to slump down. Same thing, if it's below 30, um, it's suggested that that's an oversell. So it's likely to pop back up again because too many people have sold. Um, and so it, the price will, in theory, correct itself. So what we're looking for is just, let's say we're only looking to buy stocks, we're not looking to short anything. So what we're going to say is uh, if RSI, and what we just want to do is the negative first element of RSI. And since we're actually um, going to plot this up, then it makes sense that we actually do do the full RSI function here. But if you really wanted to uh, just be like high frequency trading it or something, you wouldn't consider the entire data length of close P, right? You would be like close P and our time frame for RSI was 14 days. So you would really only need to be like close P minus like, you know, 15, right? Colon. And that way you're not calculating RSI for, you know, 150 points or something like that. You're only calculating it for 15 points. So you're, you're, um, processing time would, would be significantly better. But for our scenario, we're going to actually chart it, so might as well just do the full calculation. So if RSI negative 1, so the if the last element in RSI is less than 30, that means, hey, we're oversold, right? Uh, what do we want to do? Well, if that's the case, then we want to graph. So now let me go ahead and make the font smaller so it's like, in effect, zooming out, right? So. If this is the case, then we want to go ahead and do all of this. Otherwise, we don't want to do that. So really what we want to do uh, is everything to the except we want to tab over. So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of this space just to make it easier. So from x equals 0 all the way down to here at the figure point, hit tab. Okay. So if RSI is less than 30, it's going to graph this and show it to us. Otherwise, it's just going to do nothing at all. <laughs> and the accept still is in play. So if anything in here fails, it will fail uh, this try here. And so everything else functionality wise stays the same. Should anyways, uh, if I'm thinking right. And I think that's all we really have to do to make a very crude um, screener. Now, obviously, you could have other other conditions in here as well. So if RSI negative one uh, is greater than 30, uh, you could also throw in a condition for like he, the person that was asking about penny stocks wanted to, to measure volume and he wanted to measure price change. Well, you would have to make a function for at least price change. Volume you wouldn't necessarily have to, um, but you would at least want to add volume together or something like that. But all that data is there. So then you could say uh, if RSI 
negative one less than 30, and then throw another if statement in here, if volume greater than, you know, one million, and so on, and continue doing that. Um, so you could throw more statements in there, or you could just have a function that considers RSI greater than 30, volume greater than X, whatever, whatever, and then if that function returns true, you do this. So anyways, let's go ahead and run this. Now it might take a while to actually find one, because it's, it's in theory looking for a rarity, right? Something that's oversold. Uh, so I'm not really sure how long it'll take. Surely we'll be able to find something before we get to like E or something like that. So anyway, let's run this and see if it even works. So now you can see it's running through all of the data. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is, I guess, I guess I'll pause it and then I'll start it once it finds a, a stock that is oversold. All right, we got one and it looks like it is BlackBerry is calling oversold. Sure enough, here's the 30 line. Here is where our RSI is and it's saying BlackBerry is oversold. No surprise, BlackBerry has been pretty weak lately. Um, so BlackBerry, uh, it's found is oversold. We're very happy because that is indeed what we were looking for. So let's go ahead and close it and see if we can't find another one um, anytime soon. Otherwise, I'll uh, pause it again. Yeah, I guess I'll pause it. I just know as soon as I pause it, something's going to like pop up. <laughs> anyway. All right, we got another one, FE, which is uh, First Energy, I believe. Um, they're also oversold, uh, and no surprise there. You got a large spike in volume, and uh, the price has just slumped severely. Um, the other thing I will mention is today is uh, December 6th, uh, so and it's Friday. So it's the first Friday of the month, which if you've been in the stock market uh, very long at all, you know is uh, jobs report day, and actually today was a very good day. We um, <clears throat> had a decrease in, in the unemployment rate. Uh, so actually the stock market kind of did a little bit of a pop today. Uh, so most stocks are kind of up around the anything from uh, half a percent to a percentage point. So that's why we haven't really found too much uh, that's oversold. Plus we're also looking at the S&P 500. So those are just historically less volatile stocks than um, other stocks. So you could look through like the Russell 3. And then especially like with penny stocks uh, that are really volatile, then you'll... Uh, probably have even better luck with this um, but anyway so there was at least a couple examples obviously you can use this with like any of the indicators we've done so far right because it would just be as simple as you know whatever the indicator is because all of the indicators returned an array RSI just returns one data point but obviously in a lot of our arrays we had like maybe an X variable and then the Y and maybe even a Z variable uh, so whichever variable you're looking for um, well, that's a weird looking stock. I'm not going to show you guys that pop up. That was weird. Um, that was like Kim or something, and it only had a few days. Let's look at Kim. What even is Kim? Kimco Reality or Realty. That's weird. It only had uh, like a couple points of data. I don't know. I think it was like a glitch in Yahoo. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, you know, whichever one you're looking for, just look at the negative first value, and then if it's less than whatever value you're looking for, if it's an oscillator. And then if it's something that's being plotted on with the actual stock price itself, or maybe you're looking for a crossover point, etc. cetera, uh, here's NLY for Annaly. Um, again, uh, another successful uh, find there. Um, anyway, so you would compare it to, you know, price compared to that, or you, a lot of people are looking for like simple moving averages crossing over or even exponential moving average crossover points, or if you're comparing like the MACD for convergence and divergence, you can do that as well. So it's really easy to make a screener and you can, you can just keep nesting if statements if you want, or you can just have a function that uh, does that kind of for you immediately uh, and so on. So anyways, Hopefully that's helpful, you guys. Um, I don't really see any point of running through like every indicator. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave like a comment below, and I can help you guys out if you have any specific uh, question that um, is you know kind of confusing or you can't quite figure it out. So hopefully that helped you guys out. Hopefully you learned something new. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.